Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you take control tonight, that you take control over our lives. Father, I just release an atmosphere of freedom in our lives tonight. And I just declare that your name will be glorified one more time. That it doesn't matter what we are going through, Father, but that your name will be glorified one more time, Jesus. It's all about you. So let all our circumstances be glorified. Glorify your name. That even our circumstances can glorify your name, Jesus. It doesn't matter. We just want to glorify your name and worship you and declare that you are the Lord that you have everything in your hands, that all we have to do is just turn our face to you, Jesus, and to focus our eyes on you. And as we worship you, you are sending confusion in the enemy's camp. As we worship you, as we declare that you are the Lord, that you are the king of our lives, of everything that we have, as we do the Father, I just declare that you are releasing confusion in the enemy's camp. That everything, Father, that has been trying to come to torment us, to, co to confuse us, Father, that you are releasing, Father, confusion into the enemy's camp tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, my King. I worship you, my Lord. Everything is for you and nothing. We can do nothing without your Holy Spirit. And you can take everything from us, but you please don't take your Holy Spirit from us. Your precious Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. You are everything to us, Holy Spirit. And if there's anything in our hearts that doesn't belong to you, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you take that. You take that. If there's idolatry in our hearts, whatever it is, whatever it looks like, we just ask you, Holy Spirit, that you can take that idolatry from our hearts cleanse us and purify our hearts cleanse us and purify our lives in Jesus oh father and we just surrender tonight and we just ask you for forgiveness and we if we have allowed anything to 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 be the center and no and we haven't allowed you jesus to be the center father we just repent tonight we repent tonight jesus and we just ask you that you cleanse us with your blood cleanse us and we will be as white as no cleanse us and purify us jesus i just release your freedom father tonight and I just ask you, Father, that you send your angels, that as we learn, that as we worship, that as we come into agreement with heaven, Father, that you are sending your warrior angels to fight this battle for us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your warrior angels. Oh, thank you, Jesus. An army of angels are being released right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Because nothing, Father, will separate us from your love, and nothing will separate us. It doesn't matter. Nothing will separate us from your love and from your presence and from your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, King Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hello, everyone. How is everyone doing tonight? Our first night of this new mentorship program. How are you guys doing? Sorry that I was having a shower. I was just like, please pray in tongues. I need to have a shower quick. I've been rushing all day as always. Um, but um, I'm glad to be here with you guys tonight. Um, if you guys please can put your cameras on. If you can't, it's fine. I just like to, you know, see faces. I always say that. I like to see faces. So make sure that... Um, that you put your cameras on um, 
and then be ready to take notes because tonight we are going to um, start going deeper and um, I just want to see how many of you are new in here how many of you this is the first life that you are here that this is your first life Gabriela oh is it Gabriela I, I guess your son Leshaunda okay I'm really bad with names so I'm sorry for that I don't see more faces I think cameras are off so okay so welcome Lisa also oh by my music no Hey Wales. Sorry guys. <laughs> With YouTube Premium, there are no ads. No Alexa, what are you doing? Okay. Sorry. That was my YouTube. I need to buy the, the premium YouTube to be able to jump the um the adverts. Anyway, welcome everyone. Let's start tonight. I believe God is good and He is good all the time. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Listen, just worship. Trust me. Like just 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 worship you don't know um what other people are going through but only through your worship and your obedience <sighs> trust me <laughs> this is gonna be another testimony that i believe what i'm going through right now i'm gonna share with you as another testimony as i always say god my life is a life of testimonies um and I believe that this is going to encourage a lot of people once I'm out of this situation. So please keep me in your prayers. God is good. Everything is fine. Um, but yeah, God is good. There's some decisions that have to be made. So um, keep me and my family, um, the ministry, in your prayers, please. I don't want to scare you, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, so tonight we are going to start um, with what is it how to protect your house from darkness so remember the first instruction that the holy spirit gave me when i wanted to set up this men men mentorship program was you need to start in order because i wanted to start you know straight away into a spiritual warfare into demons taking territories and i was excited and the holy spirit told me no 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 you cannot send to warfare an injured soldier so that was his instruction that first we needed to go through a process of deliverance a process of healing and i asked him how long this is going to be and he told me whatever it takes it can take months one month it can take one year he said just just do it and you know be guided and this is what we've been doing since november until april right that we've been going through a process of deliverance that i took you guys into into deliverance into healing so if you, any of you are new in here if you haven't catch up with the content my first advice for you is that you make sure that you watch the past content why because that is essential for the spiritual warfare okay i don't want to give you any more uh, uh, instructions if first you haven't catch up with those videos which are which are unforgiveness rejection witchcraft sexual immorality infirmities and I, and I think those five areas cover the main portals that the enemy uses to attack us so make sure even if you say oh you know what i'm i'm, I'm free i'm thinking listen it doesn't matter deliverance is daily deliverance is daily so this is something that i'm going to keep saying deliverance is daily and you need to make sure that in your heart you know that your heart is right every single day that you need to make sure that if the holy spirit is showing you in dreams that you need to break with an iniquity from your ancestor or you need to break something or remove something from your house is daily so don't think that because you have the title christian now you are safe it doesn't work like that you can be christian and be bind by demons and oppressed and you know and the enemy has the all the legal right in your life so let's break that mentality of oh i'm christian i'm sorry your title doesn't give you anything even saying jesus doesn't give you any, anything okay just to let that clear just saying jesus doesn't doesn't that doesn't um the same way that these people were um, oppressed by the demons and they were hit by demons and they said, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your, in your name. That doesn't mean anything, okay? What it makes the difference are your fruits, the life that you are carrying. So this is, I believe this is my aim here on earth is not just to set people free, but also to push people, you know, like you can do this. This is what you have to do. This is the way that you need to take. It's not just don't wait for your pastor to come and pray for you. Don't wait for them. Don't go to church every Sunday, just sitting there. No, 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 no. We don't have time for that. We are in a spiritual warfare and we don't have time to play games. So we need to prepare our hands, be ready, 
go through deliverance make sure that is the pain the process is painful it's really painful how many of you in here when you started to go through the rejection through the abuse remembering all of those things it hurts and a lot of you cry including myself because as i was teaching as i was like learning all of those things kept coming and i'm like oh lord maybe i need healing right so this is an another thing that when your eyes are open and when you start to realize that this is the way to be set free the enemy is going to fight you back like uh, theo is saying since i started this program and dreaming fighting demons come on the enemy knows the enemy knows that when the veil is is removed oh warfare is here even i always say after a deliverance that's when warfare comes that's what i always say don't think that because you went through deliverance everything is done no 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 that's just the beginning and that's when you need to practice what we have been learning about your mind about renewing of your mind about worshiping your house about all of the, th the those things that i have been learning so those are just weapons so if you're new here please um I'm catching up and doing the rejection one now and wow the tears yes yeah, see see every time even myself i like to watch myself back my husband look at me we are like why are you watching us and i like to watch the videos in high speed like quick because i get a stress when you know when i'm going quite quite slow so i like so he gets like why are you doing that and i tell him because i like to maybe the lord bring healings to myself through myself <laughs> so i always like to um watch uh youtube my own videos and, and i'm like oh holy spirit that's good did i say that and i'm taking notes and i'm like wow holy spirit that's when i know like holy spirit like you are in control you are the one that speak no not me because sometimes i just hear some things that i say and i'm like where that come from right and is the holy spirit completely so topic for today um i forgot what was it okay how to protect your house from darkness part one why part one because first i'm going to be targeting how to protect your house from darkness and then i'm going to take you guys into how to protect your land which means your neighborhood which means your city your nation but first of all as as you see we need to go in order first deliverance first we go through the process of closing those portals then we go now into our house okay because deliverance iniquities generational courses that is the first step for a spiritual warfare to be able to be ready for the next step so now we go into our houses um so we are going to be talking about how to protect our house our children from darkness okay and the first thing that i want you to know in john 10 10 we know john 10 10 how many of you in here know john 10 10 even children how many children ah oh! Look at look Gabriela's son. You know John 10 10. Do you wanna do you wanna tell us? Wait, let me see. Yes. yes. What did the enemy king to do, puppy? To kill him. To kill. Yeah. And to uh, kill and what else? Destroy to destroy. Mm -hmm. Yes, come on. <laughs> see, we are trying here good boy what's your name ab sanchez rosa <laughs> super spanish name sanchez rosa <laughs> that's good that's good. god bless you oh see guys we remove so that's what your john ten ten let me just spotlight john ten ten says right that the thief doesn't come ex except to steal to kill and to destroy i have come uh, to give you life and life in abundance okay so this bible verse in here is the key to understanding the spiritual war in which we as christians fight ourselves so there is a thief there is there is an entity out there who ha who is coming right and uh, and he's trying to come to steal and he's trying to come to 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 kill and he's trying to call and destroy our destiny whatever we have that's his 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 aim so he is the enemy of our souls and it's important that we are wise to his scheme like understanding the enemy's devices and the enemy tries dif different ways we know this and i'm sure that you know this the enemy tries different ways and one of the ways that he tries to still kill and destroy is in our houses is if we allow him to step into our house this is why witches right when they astro project like they can see in the spiritual realm if a house is protected or or no they see that 
they see if the house is covered with this white cloth or if the house is in darkness and based on the state of the house witches can go right there or warlocks they can go right there and from inside the house shoo, release what they want to release that's how black magic works right i'm just telling you they go right there and in there they start releasing a spirit of adultery let's put it i just look let's say that for example this is not a topic but let's say that for example a woman wants to be with someone that has a wife and you know they're having issues so they go to the witch and the witch what she does is that she's going to release in that house to the man a spirit of adultery a spirit of of um, lust and that's what happens so if the house is protected they can't come in and i know this because the lord showed me in a dream after I come out of the occultism, for those of you that know the testimony of this witch that was trying to destroy our lives, she tries to come inside my house. And the Lord allowed me to see that they couldn't do it because my house was, pro was protected by this white cover. And the Lord told me, I am your protector now. They can't do it anymore. But why? That, that cover can be like removed or coming like come down if you allow the enemy if you are like sinning so this is what we are gonna talk now if, we, if you are sinning if you are not worshiping you are that cover keeps coming down it's not that the Lord doesn't want to protect you but if there is a legal right like a contract in the spirit that's been signed you are handling that to the enemy and that's when the enemy tries to come inside your house so this is why listen it's so important it's not about being legalistic it's no but this is warfare and this is how it works so you take it or you don't but then don't moan if there's warfare in your house okay so um okay so what is darkness so let's start from the beginning to what is darkness so in the bible uh, uh, light has always been a symbol of holiness goodness knowledge so we, we know that light so there is the opposite of darkness is light so light represents also wisdom grace hope god's revelation but darkness is always been associated with evil with sin with with a, a destruction and darkness is this a spiritual force that takes place over when the will of god is rejected so this is when darkness takes over when the will of god is rejected and this gives the enemy the legal right and authority to come over and to take over that person's life the house the land the nation okay so this is what happens and all of us all around us uh, we are influenced by this darkness so all around us we are influenced by this darkness this is why it says that we are the salt and the light of the world jesus through us jesus is the light jesus in is the is the is the light in us so now we are like a lamp that has to be put in this high mountain to shine so that is the first thing that i want you guys to know is that the darkness that is around us and if we fall into temptation what is going to happen is that we are allowing the enemy to come and what happens is that our prayers are not affected we don't hear his voice we don't know his will so also i want you guys now to identify if after all the deliverance session you are still dealing with something now maybe let's talk about the house and let's talk about the land and let's talk about the things that you are allowing in your house because that could be another area okay and then, um, as I said, as believers, we are we are called to be light in this darkness. The question is, are we effective in dispelling darkness or are we helping it alone? Are we partnering with darkness or are, are we dismantling what the enemy is doing? So that's what we have to do. This is why I, 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 I actually dislike, I'm not going to say hate because I don't like that word, when people are in charge and they're just not doing anything. Like, that's not our mission. Our mission is to be aware that there is darkness, that we are light, and that we need to take over. Wherever you go, even if you haven't been called to the fivefold ministries, in your workplace, in your family, wherever you are, you are in charge of changing the atmosphere in that place. Through you, that atmosphere has, has to change. It doesn't matter who you live with. Because some people say, oh, but I live with these people. Oh, but I, um, my husband is unconverted. Oh, but I have this object in my house that I can remove. No, it doesn't matter. What you carry is stronger than what they carry. And you have the authority inside of you 
to change and transform the atmosphere. And that's what I have been doing with my husband. You know that since I met him, he wasn't Christian, he's going through a process now, but constantly I'm being changed in the atmosphere. And at the beginning, I used to complain, I'm also going to do a teaching for those of you that have um, unconverted family members and how you bring them closer to God. How, what do you have to do? But it's all about intimacy and the authority that you carry inside of you to change the atmosphere, wherever you go, whatever the circumstance is. So what, uh, what do we need in order for us to protect our house or our land? Okay, so what do we need? So I'm going to give you say, three points. Okay, three points. So what do we need in order for us to protect our house or our land? So this is what I'm going to be talking also next week if I have time tonight of our life. Number one, so what do we need to protect us? And the first one, and I always say this and I'm always going to say intimacy with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that is always the basic of us being called children of God, of you being called Christian, is intimacy with the Holy Spirit. As I said, the title doesn't mean anything. It's the intimacy with the Holy Spirit. So first we need to be empowered by the, by the Holy Spirit in order to enter into a, a spiritual warfare. So you need to first know the power of Jesus, that the power of Jesus is, through, is in you through the Holy Spirit. So that is the first thing that you need to know and you need to have intimacy and you need to have relationship with the Holy Spirit because listen, without this you have nothing. Without this you have nothing, okay? So the empowering work of the Spirit give us that authority that we need that we need to evict those demons from our houses, to evict those demons from our land. That's what we need, the empowering of the Holy Spirit through intimacy with Him, okay? The second one, meditating, actually, okay, no, actually, sorry. So there, there's there's three, but in this category of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, sorry, I just forgot that I just, last minute I add. In this category of intimacy with the Holy Spirit, so this is number one, but in this one, in this category, we have, uh, how do you call it, sub, sub points, sub number, uh, okay, you know what I mean, okay, A and B, yeah, number one, intimacy with the Holy Spirit, but then you have A. You should know this by now. A, meditating in the Word of God, renewing all your mind through the Word of God. That is the first one. Second, praying. He commands, God com com commands us to devote ourselves to prayer in Col Colossians 4, 2. Devote yourself to prayer. And what happened is that if you neglect player, prayer, you are neglected, ne neglecting God. So when you fail to pray, we break the covenant, the covenant, the command. Oh God, what's going on? <laughs> when we break, when you don't pray, when you fail to pray, what happened is that you are breaking the commandment, the commandment of loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. In Matthew 22, 37, 38. So meditating in the word of God, praying, and the other one fasting. So all of these are basic fasting, you know, because many times we cannot gain the revelation we need for our next step without it. So if you are looking for a decision, if you are looking for direction, if there's something that you need to do fast, fast, because fast, fasting, when you fast, removes that spiritual clutter and then put us in a better position to hear, to hear God. So if you are desperate, you are crying, just fast, fast, okay? The Bible verse that I mentioned with praying was, is it Colossians 4, 2? And Matthew 22, Matthew 22, 37, 38. Then I said fasting, then I said giving, okay? Why giving? Because giving is the very heart of God. He gave his son for us. So if you have Jesus in you, let me tell you something, giving is another characteristic of, of, of Jesus in you, giving, because we are called to multiply what, what God gives us, okay? And what happened is that we need to give, but some of you, you don't like to receive. There's some people that when you wanna bless them, they are just like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't stop the blessing. Why? You are being blessed, but the person that's giving is more blessed. So if someone wants to give to you, accept it. 
don't feel offended just accept it because you are being blessed but also the person that is giving is being obedient and also uh, um, is being is being is being is being blessed the other point so first point meditation in the word of god praying fasting giving worrying worrying we need to understand that anything that god has told us to do or he has ordained us to accomplish is always going to be met with resistance from the enemy always so in order for us to reach that promise to reach the potential or all of that that god is calling us to do the first thing that you are going to face is warfare that's why worrying is really important and if you see all of these points that i have given you are a type of warfare all of these things fasting is warfare giving is warfare all of these things so whether you like it or no you are in warfare and you need to decide if you want to complain or you want to war and the enemy is going to always attack you regardless of your situation if you are in the war the enemy is going to attack you if you are a christian the enemy is going to attack you so regardless you need to be involved in a spiritual warfare this is why i don't understand when people don't know about these things like listen regardless you are in warfare but it's better to be in the kingdom of god where we have all the all the weapons that we can use against the enemy than to be in the other side and be ignorant on the enemy's devices right but now we are in this place now we are in life and now we have the authority and we have weapons that we can use to come against the enemy okay and the last one uh, of this intimacy with the holy spirit is always going to be worshiping and worshiping is no it's not just you singing songs no it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle and worshiping and intimacy with the holy spirit is connected to the prophetic so if you want to be a prophetic person if you want to keep receiving dreams vision and revelation and prophecies the key for you to get that revelation is worship and intimacy with the holy spirit so that's why you can separate once you separate the prophetic from intimacy and worship then you are stepping into witchcraft. <laughs> That's what I always say. Hey, there is a really thin line. If you are prophesying, my friend, without intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you are stepping into divination and witchcraft. My head is right now. That's why it's important to always have, first of all, intimacy. That is always going to be my teaching to all of you. Intimacy with the Holy Spirit and worship. That is the key for the rest. That is the key for warfare. That is the key for deliverance. That is the key for healing. That is the key for provision. That is the key for everything. That's why you're always going to hear me and see me uh, uh, worshiping or singing. I don't even have a voice for singing, but I don't care, right? God sees my heart, so that's the most important thing. Not my voice, but the posture of my heart, right? And the posture of 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 of, um, of you at the time of worshiping. Okay. So that's the number one, intimacy with the Holy Spirit and all the subcategories that I just give you, right? Which are um, meditating in the Word of God, praying, fasting, giving, worrying, war I hope I pronounced that right, warring, warring? Okay, like doing warfare and then worshiping. Point number two, and this is what we have been doing. Make sure that you have um, closed portals in your life. And as I said, this is why for the last six months, seven months, we have been working on our iniquities. We have been working in generational courses. We have been working in all of these areas, in deliverance from witchcraft, sexual immorality, rejection, infirmities, because this is the main step to protect your house and your children. Apart from intimacy with the Holy Spirit, the second one is make sure that you have these main areas closed in your life and forgiveness is the main one, okay? Because this is the main step to protect your house and your children. So as I said before, if you are new here, make sure that you are watching the other deliverance videos, videos and doing the deliverance prayer, okay? That is really important. And when we do Holy Spirit Friday night, if you have gone through the deliverance videos and prayers and you need a prayer, you need to email us and let us know. So with me and my team during the Holy Spirit Friday night, we target that demon because also demons respond to certain authorities. So let's say that witchcraft, um, some demons of high rank, they don't, they only obey to that type of rank. So if you are a person that has been commissioned and anointed for that specifically, they are going to obey. That's why sometimes it's so hard to get out of demons. So this type this these type of things because maybe the person hasn't been given the uh, anointing in that area. So that's why it's important. My email is info 
casa one please type it if you guys have my email at julielinelopez.com okay so this is why important please make sure that you go through the content in um, deliverance and make sure that you close this portal okay so first one intimacy with the holy spirit second make sure that you are cleansing yourself cleansing all of that clutter everything iniquities gener generational courses and forgiveness is painful but trust me is going to take you to a different level and also it's going to take you to a different level in intimacy with the holy spirit thank you tom um then number three objects okay and this is where i'm going to focus a little bit objects so this is the point number three objects but some people ask but do objects have power what is going on like you know some people don't believe in these things but what i always say is that there is nothing wrong with an object there is there's nothing wrong but as believers we need to understand that there is always an invisible sp spiritual force behind an invisible object so even if the object is nothing related with occultism, nothing, but it's been coarse or something has been put on the object. It could just be a stone. It automatically is opening a portal to the enemy. And I'm telling you because when I was a witch, we understand the power of objects and cursing objects or blessing objects and giving it to the person and blah, blah, blah. So this is why it's important. It doesn't matter if it's just a plant. That's why this sermon is key. This sermon is key. A lot of people say, oh, I have this, but I don't use it for this, and blah, blah, blah. But now, ask yourself, where did you buy that from? What is the origin of that, of that rock? What is the origin of that crystal? If you, if you bought that in, an, in a new age place, let me tell you something, you are already opening a door. Even if you are not using it, I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that, right? So that's why this sermon is always going to be key. It doesn't matter if you're not using it for whatever purposes. It doesn't matter. What, what is the origin of that? Where does it come from? So I hope I'm, I'm answering a lot of questions that people have been having towards objects. So it doesn't matter what the object is. Is is there is what is behind the object? Where does it come from? Okay, maybe it has been prayed over by someone or put witchcraft on. It doesn't matter. That's why this sermon is important. This sermon through the Holy Spirit. If you feel like something is not right, it could be maybe like a a coin. It could whatever it is. If you feel that something is not right, listen to that. That might be the Holy Spirit telling you, telling you something. Okay. Um, but then I'm, go I'm gonna give you another strategy of you, you know if you have objects that you can't remove from your house like what do you do and blah blah so we are gonna target those things okay so uh, so yeah so the spiritual force that is behind the object and we see this in the Bible and many times in the Bible the Lord deals with a person or thing and ask us to look deeper into the spiritual force behind that person or thing as I said it doesn't matter where what object it is okay is what is what comes behind that like, like you need to be in the spirit to be able to discern that and i want us to to look in Isaiah um um Isaiah 14 where the prophet uh, Isaiah addresses the king of babylon and then when uh, and then we find references made to lucifer right so he was the king of babylon but he in Isaiah 14 then we see that it's like it's kind of like it's making reference to Lucifer, and then we find the same situation in Ezekiel 28. And this is one way that demons operate. Paul writes, We do not look at the things which are seen, but uh, at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Second of Corinthians 4 18. So Paul is saying in here that there is more we need to be aware on that which we can perceive with our five natural senses. So the same thing that I was trying to explain before. Okay. What you see, you need to be like more, have more discernment and ask the Holy Spirit what is behind, what is that thing that you are feeling. Always ask the Holy Spirit. Always ask the Holy Spirit and then um, so that so that so we finish with that part in uh, um, what do we need in order for us to protect our house in our land so intimacy with the Holy Spirit make sure that you have a close portals in your life and three remove objects so I said I put objects but it's remove objects okay so those are the three things that you need to make sure um, that you are checking in your life now the second question will be where can demons inhabit or live where so they can inhabit people and we see in the bible a lot of bible verses about i didn't want to go deeper i, I would have loved to go deeper but i hope you guys know about this already because there's a lot of steps that i want to go through and we don't have time actually 
Um, so they can inhabit people, objects, portions of land, or whole territor territories depending on their purpose. And this is where we go uh, to principalities, right? And this is when uh, we go to nations and all of these things. So demons can be like in people, objects, land, neighborhood, territories, objects, okay? And they don't care. Listen, animal, uh, demons don't care where they are living as long as they can accomplish their assigned objectives. So I want you to have that clear. They, they, they don't care. As soon as they can like have that open portal, they can uh, do their um, their assignment. Ezekiel by Borbels. Ezekiel 28. So you can look it up in there. Now, so that's the second question. Where can demons inhabit? Third question. How can they get access through that in your house and your land? So how they can get access through that? At the end, I'm going to um, share a testimony. How can they get access through that? So they can get, get they can get gain access through, as I said before, sin, iniquity, trauma, witchcraft, occult practices, or cursing. Okay. So how these demons, these principalities, how we give them access in our house or in our land? So you need to identify through sin or iniquity, trauma. That's another thing that. Oh, we need to heal traumatic experiences, witchcraft, occult practices, or core scene, okay? And it's not like we want to be talking all about demons and all of this, but we need to be aware of what they are and how they operate in order to keep our own house free from them. Amen? So this is something really important. Um, is anyone saying? Okay. Um, and then... So when I'm talking about um, the land, we see in Genesis, so I'm going to give you a quick Bible verses in here. Genesis 19, Ezekiel 16, 50, second of Peter 2, 7, and Jude 7. So Genesis 9, 19, Ezekiel 16, 50, second of Peter 2, 7, and Jude 7. And in these Bible verses, it talks about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. So the, this land was infected with sexual immorality, with violence, with other practices. And this is what happened nowadays in nations. This is what happened now, nowadays in, in, in cities. So when you see a city or a country going through violence, someone needs to stand in the gap to intercede and repent for that place and for God to be, bring healing to the land so that is another thing that we are going to be talking in next week in healing the land healing the nations healing that that part so it all comes to that but before you go into that and step in into that make sure that you have closed portals in your life because that is a another type of spiritual warfare um okay so number po um question number i, I think this is the, the the four right yeah so what are the indicators as to whether a home needs to be cleansed of a spiritual darkness so how can you know how can you know if your house needs to be cleansed how can you know that i think smoking yeah definitely because that is like a type of addiction okay so those are addictions so yeah so how can you know in your how in your home needs cleansing? Okay, so we are. I'm, I'm going to give you here a few points of uh, symptoms of a spiritually polluted atmosphere. So how do you know if your house is contaminated? How do you know if your house your house requires cleansing? So this is what I'm going to put um, say in here. Sudden chronic illness. So people that suddenly they just become ill out of nowhere. Oh, you were so healthy. What happened? You just became ill right so sudden chronic illness insomnia or unusual sleepiness so if you're always feeling like with insomnia or you are always feeling sleepy the heaviness that's a second one or if you enter into a place and you're feeling that heaviness in the atmosphere that's another thing that's why discernment listen discernment is key Two, uh, three, recurrent bad dreams and nightmares, espe especially in children. Listen, for those of you that have children, children are so sensitive to the spiritual realm. You can even imagine how sensitive children are. Children, since a really young age, they can't see the spiritual realm. If your house is infected, they're, they're going to see demons. And I have seen children, and I'm telling you, I have seen children 
where they see something in their house and they cry uncontrollably and they point and they trust me my son was one of them years ago so they um they um they are they are sensitive so always listen to what your son is saying to what your daughter is saying listen to them because they are sensitive it's like they, 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 they are they, their spiritual senses are open so make sure and if your son maybe for some reason is is looking a lot of demons and is thinking just i'm gonna when we do the teaching for children are going to tell you guys what you have to do okay but just to let you know now if you are having a, a kid a, a child that is facing these things that he's just having a lot of nightmares looking at things and is getting crazy because that used to happen to me too when i was young there's nothing wrong with the with a kid with a child he has a gift or she has a gift so you can close that down so the first thing that you need to do is ask the holy spirit what is in your house ask the holy spirit what open portal is there because they should be they should be they should be experiencing more angelical encounters than darkness so that's when there is an um that's when there is wrong there so all you have to do is make sure that you know close portals in your life in your house all of that stuff then you are knowing them but some people are knowing the kids so they don't see darkness that's wrong you need to annoy them so that and when they do that they shut down their spiritual senses so they can't see anymore god give them a dream by anointing that they are doing the opposite because they don't want them to see darkness now you need to switch that and pray that they are that they are that they are going to see angelic beings and then uh, when they grow that the lord is going to give them the ability to see darkness and to uh, you, you know use that for a, sp a spiritual warfare okay i i don't know if that's clear but when we go into the children's part i'm gonna be touching into 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 those areas okay so bad dreams nightmares insomnia behavioral problems okay behavioral problems or re relational problems like fighting arguing misinterpreted communication like if you go to a place or in your house and you just enter into your house and you're constantly arguing and you feel like angry and that could be that your house needs cleansing so your house another one is um unexplained illnesses or as i said before sudden uh, sickness that could be a, a, a like seeing that you are buying to something your house or something that happened there ghosts or demonic apparitions as i said like children are more so, uh, particular open to this type of exp experiences poltergeist i hope i'm pronouncing that right like the movement of objects and this is really common when you see like things are moving in your house that is another sign that you need your house cleanse and explain others when you you know i always say we can't smell the holy spirit we can't smell him for me it's just the smell of flowers and the smell of garden and it's fresh but if you are smelling um something wrong in your house constantly that could mean that your house needs cleansing also your order for the spiritual warfare and deliverance is powerful because some people i don't have my um order really um strong but my mom does so when, when, when she's doing deliverance on people or in in, ter in territory she she smells sin she smells death she smells witchcraft sexual immorality and because it's so strong it makes her want to bo vomit so sometimes she's like that <laughs> so it's quite funny and i have experienced that um i think it was one once when i was doing a deliverance in rick london that i shared my testimony and sad, oh, a strong smell came to me and i was like if you watch the video i do like that was the first time that i experienced when i was praying for someone that strong smell and i'm like what was this and i had never experienced that and i'm like oh wow that's 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 weird but as you practice you learn uh, to control those those type of things so um another one is continual nauseas and headaches like you feel like headaches and you feel like nauseous that is another one atmosphere heaviness like making it hard to breathe and this is another one that i went through when i was obviously involved in witchcraft and my house my house always had this heaviness and i realized about that heaviness when my dad committed suicide that i left the house to live with this witch and when I came back to the house that I entered, it was like I was entering the house and whoosh, someone put on me this heavy, this heavy blanket. You know, when you wear these blankets in Colombia of like lions and tigers, for, and they are really thick and they are like massive. And you just put them and they are just like, that's how it felt. That's how you feel it, that heaviness in the house. Um, 
I had a lot of experiences like that where I, I think I, I shared with you in another one in my aunt's house when we went to visit her. I was pregnant with my first one with uh, Gian. He's seven now, so that was seven years ago. I was just learning, but I my spiritual senses were activated, has been always activated. And we went to the house and and um, I didn't know anything. And they put me to sleep in a room with my cousin, my, li my little cousin, cousin that was having nightmares. She was having nightmares and I didn't know. And my mom didn't even tell me. They literally put me in a room to see if there was demons in the house and in the room. And I was, I, I didn't know. And they put me there. And obviously I went to sleep and I just I started to, um, wait one sec, I think my husband is asking me if I won't fall. I'm like, oh, baby, I'm fasting. <laughs> so, um, and then they put me in the room with her. And what happened, I didn't know anything. I just went to sleep and I started to have these visions of demons and awful. Obviously by then I didn't know anything about spiritual warfare, deliver. I didn't know. So because the gifts that I had, they were still there. So I keep seeing all of these demons and I wake up the next day. And the first thing that I told them when I wake up was like, I slept so bad. I keep seeing like all of these. We were Christians, but we were a starting. I told them, I keep seeing these demons and awful and they saw my neck and they were like, what happened? And I'm like, whoa, <sighs> all a scratch. Scratch all my neck, scratch in here. I was pregnant there. And they, and they, my mom looked at my aunt and she was like, see, I told you, there's demons in here. And I was like, oh, so you put me in the room to see if they, if they were demons. I was like, thank you for that. I, I was all night struggling and I didn't even know, I didn't know how to, how to cast out. I didn't know. So I was just there struggling all night. Like, what can I do? And what happened was that, um, my mom told me, grab all your cousins, everyone, leave the house, and I'm going to cleanse the house. My mom, at that point, she was moving more in that than me. And what happened, I left the house, and then she tells me that as she was worrying, she was learning there too. So this was as she was doing, but she was brave and, do, and doing it. She said that as she was entering in, in the house to cleanse the house, this heavy heaviness, and she was walking in the house trying to do a spiritual warfare. And she said that it reminds her, do you remember when my dad died, right? In that house, there was an atmosphere so awful because of the suicide, the witchcraft. The, that house was polluted in darkness, okay? So every time that you used to go to that house, nightmares, awful, awful stuff, the heaviness, depression, sadness. So when, when I entered into my the house that my dad died, I fell down. And what happened is that we had to leave the house after one week because of the heaviness in that house. Every single night, I was having dreams of blood, of murder. It was just impossible and we decided we had to leave the house and we left everything we just took a few clothes the bible because by that point my, my mom realized you, you know the bible we grabbed the bible and left the house with my aunt so uh, the house and my, and, my, and my mom said that every time that obviously the house was in darkness that house and a catholic uh, priest told her that she needs to do exorcism in the house but she did she didn't know how they told her go for 15 days to pray for the house and to put holy water, is that how, how you call it in English? And do holy water and go into the house. My mom didn't know, so she wanted to do exorcism in the house. She went without knowing anything with someone, with another witch, as she was a white witch. She was with her for the house, apparently to pray and do exorcism for, for the house, to remove that spirit, because they used to believe that my dad's spirit was trapped in there, so she wanted to release it, uh, I, a lot of, like things so she went there for 15 days and she was saying that every time that she was entering into the house it was like confusion and the heaviness and see obviously by then she knew the bible and she was learning about jesus and she said she entered into the house our cat was speaking i'm not joking i also hear my cat before my dad died speaking i'm fighting outside with something he was uh, speaking this my mom entered and in the house, the cat was talking to her and she, she was getting crazy. And she said that when this other woman went with her in the house, and my mom doesn't lie, when this other woman was with her in the house, like putting the water everywhere and praying, you know, blah, blah. what happened is that when my mom looked at the other woman's face, the woman's face turned into a demon and it started to laugh at my mom. My mom was losing it. My mom was getting crazy. My mom saw the woman laughing with a demon's face under the atmosphere in the house, the cat talking to her. And my mom remembered then the name of Jesus. 
she started to say, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. And she just went through the house running and left. And she said that that experience remind her when she was now in my aunt's house, uh, when years later, when she was there praying for the house, she said that she felt that she entered into a similar atmosphere. Oh, obviously the atmosphere that we were facing in our house, it was bigger, <coughs> but she said that it was quite similar because all that heaviness and as she was praying for the house and going to my cousin's room to cast out there, apparently there was um, a familiar spirit that it was like a child that it was trying to speak to her and it was tormenting her in dreams and speaking to her and the little girl, my cousin was, only, was four and he was talking to this little boy. So it was a familiar spirit. So my mom went there and she said that the atmosphere reminded her of, of that. Uh, so as you see guys this is this is this is real like these things are real so this is why this sermon this sermon of spirits i'm also going to be talking soon about the sermons of spirits if you any of you have that how do you improve that like how can you do that because it's good for you to know if you go to a place that you have that discernment if you go if your children you also need to teach your children when they feel something about someone to tell you and listen to them this is important Okay, that's why this sermon is key. The sermon of spirits is one of the strongest weapons for spiritual warfare. You can't do spiritual warfare or deliverance if you don't have the sermon of spirits. Obviously, you have Jesus and the Holy Spirit and he, and he will show you. But be able to discern through the Holy Spirit is also um, the key. So, all of these um, points, right? Also, another thing that I wanted to say with objects, but let me just go quick because I'm going really long and look at the time now so if you're experiencing any of these things you need to ask the holy spirit ask the holy spirit to reveal any spiritual darkness that might be taking place in your house okay and remember that jesus gave us authority over these things he is greater than any force that might come against you okay there is no need to fear but you need to become aware of the demonic and how it works and how it affects your life for you to be able to protect your house and your children and your family and everything that you have. And if the Lord has called you to nations, then uh, nations. Um, and then we see in the Bible, a lot of Bible verses about when uh, these type of things with objects uh, uh, um, bring something and some, someone, something in particular that, uh, that I found as I was reading this, Bi this Bible verse. Do you know in Genesis 31, uh, Genesis 35, sorry, when Rachel died while giving birth to Benjamin. So Genesis 35, Rachel died while giving birth to Benjamin. And I was wondering, did she die? Did she die prematurely because of what she did? And if you go to Genesis 31, we see that Jacob and, and Rachel and everything, they fled from Laban. And when Laban, so Laban was the father of Rachel, if I'm not wrong, when Laban caught them, caught them, he accused them of stealing some, some uh, household gods. And Jacob, this is what Jacob said, with whom, whomever you find your gods, do not let him live in the presence of our beth brethren, identify what I have of yours and take it with you. It says, do not let him live. So Laban was Rachel's father. And what happened is that Jacob didn't know that Rachel had stolen the household gods and put them in, the, in her camel saddle. And when Laban was searching for the objects uh, linked with the idolatry, what happened was that Rachel pretended to be in her monthly period. She, th she, was, she was like acting like she was her period. And what happened by that point is that men couldn't come closer. So the man couldn't find, couldn't look for the, for the god, for the idol in the bag that she was there hiding okay and what happened and i believe that this is why she died prematurely because already jacob was saying like if you find the gods don't let him live so it was already a decree in her life because of an object right and this is exactly how the enemy comes into your house when you take objects that you shouldn't have he hands you down because there is a legal right that you have given him. So this is why it's important to identify these this type of things, knowingly or unknowingly. Oh, Esther. Hmm. That's a tricky one. I will ask you, um, answer you in a minute. And then a similar story is told in, jo in, jo in Joshua uh, 7. Um, 
when uh, Israel experienced defeat in the Battle of Ai, which occurred immediately after its victory in Jericho. But God told them, he was warning them and taking them, do not take any coarse things. And they took and hid several all, the, all of these objects from the enemy. And as a result, Israel was defeated. So you can see here, this is important what you take. And then, then the opposite happened in Acts 19. Acts 19. What happened was that uh, um, all of these objects that were linked with magic and sorcery, you can, you can read Acts 19 were burned, were burned in the middle of the city. So all of these witches, all, all, all of these um, seers, all of these people were coming, burning all of their magic stuff, all of the sorcery, all of the objects linked with occultism. And this was a key to one of the greatest revivals and awakenings recorded in the, uh, recorded in the Bible. So this is, so using here, what objects when you bring into a house can bring, destruction, infirmity, death, but also when you remove them, it brings revival. Um, so which objects? So this is the other question. Which objects do you need to be aware in your house? This is something that a lot of people ask. Which which objects? Okay. And then I'm gonna tell you guys what happens if you can remove an object from a house. Um, so which objects? Fer first one falls religions, objects. So objects or materials related to false religion. So I'm giving you this so you guys can start identifying, okay? Objects or materials related to false religions such as uh, Mormonism, Islam, Jehovah's Witness, Hinduism, uh, Eastern religion. So all of these things with false religions that is not related with our God. All of these things in your house should be removed which means objects, which means books, which means all of these things that represent uh, these false religions, okay? Foreign gods, Deuteronomy 5a. Foreign gods, like Buddhas, Greek gods, gargoyles, uh, Egyptian Im images, and actually la la last night I had actually a really interesting dream. I need to think about it. I was walking in a road with my son with the oldest and in here in this side I saw it lo a lot of Egyptian Egyptian gods and I could hear the names of these gods in the dream like Ra and all of that and they were like in the road of the street planted like that so I'm wondering if that means in terms of taking territories I need to go deep more in that but um, I'm sure it means something related with those type of principalities established on the streets in some somewhere so i need to but yeah anyway <laughs> um so foreign gods buddhas egyptian images greek gods gargoyles um um like um any other image of a person like idol god demonic figure that is considered an object of worship or spiritual power in any culture in the world so we are talking here about dragons also like the chinese one all of those things are also um, important then occult objects so anything related to the occultism might be destroyed immediately i don't care if you tell me i don't care destroy them okay crystals yes they are made by god so this is why you need to come into discernment with the holy the holy spirit uh, so objects like Ouija boards good luck charms amulets astrology like ho like horoscope tarot cards crystals um Voodoo, voodoo dolls, pagan symbols, crystal balls, ritual items su such as like mask, uh, like the African mask, pyramid or obelisk, any of these things related with, with occultism, with voodoo. If you go to a shop, be careful that the shop is not like new age because right now they are trying to camouflage. Is that how you say? Camouflage occultism to us. So this is why this sermon is key. Where are you stepping in? Now you are gonna go to do a facial and it's all new weight around and you're going to do the facial and they are doing the facial with the very same same thing that they do their enchantments and their and their stuff and the crystals that's why this sermon is key um what else um other objects and other objects um like games let's say games violent games books and magazines uh, like about fantasy comic books uh, movies music with with uh, uh, demonic stuff violence sexual things pornography illegal drugs um what else do I, I have a whole list illegal immoral or contrary to god's word okay so if you allow any any of these type of things into your house 
you are giving the enemy a legal right. And you know, another thing that I realized with this is that not only if the music that you are listening to is demonic, but I hear the other day, no, it's not Mickey Minaj, she's the other woman, that she was saying that she didn't want to do that song. I don't remember the name. Nicki Minaj, I think she's Christian. Uh, Cardi B, yeah, that she was saying that, that she didn't want to do that song because she knew that she was releasing demons into that song. And I was actually reading the lyrics of the song and she's not literally releasing demons. And I was like, this is strange because the words are not even as bad as other ones, but she was saying that it was releasing demons. So that's why uh, Halloween stuff, yes, please. That is another one right there, of course. So that's why it's important. Discernment, even that type of music. I was reading the lyrics and I was like, this is weird. But she was saying that it was releasing um, demons, so that's why it's important. Yes, um, she is a witch. I just believe that God is touching her life. Like she's bringing, she was asking for help. She was li li literally screaming for help. So she was like saying, this is this is wrong, that she's feeling the conviction. So we need to keep praying for these famous people, you know, to, to be open because they have a lot of followers. So if they turn now to God, these followers are now like face God now too. So they're influenced, right? So we need to pray um, for them. Yes, I'm going to be putting the list on, t on Teachable. Yeah. Uh, Halloween stuff also, please, Halloween stuff, make sure that you are removing everything related with death. And I'm talking about ashes. For those of you that have been asking about ashes, I'm talking about bonds. I'm talking about Halloween stuff. Everything that opens the portal to death in your house, okay? That is dangerous. You need to ask the Holy Spirit. You need to have discernment. I'm not going to tell you, do this, do that. No, I'm just giving you as, as, as an advice. Then you go with the Holy Spirit and you weigh that. But everything related with it, like if you come to my house, my house is almost empty. He don't find... I just decorated this room because of the life and, you know, the, uh, the sessions, the things that I need to record. But if you go around my house, it's, it's almost empty. You don't see barely anything in the walls. Why? Because I'm, I'm cautious, right? Um, I'm not paranoid, but at the same time, I'm careful with the things and the decorations and the things that I'm bringing into my house because I understand how darkness works. Um, so yeah, ashes. Um, all of the ashes. What was after ashes? I don't understand. What was after ashes? I don't remember. Um, yeah, incense, like sage. For those of you that you are thinking that burning sage is going to get rid of demons in your house, that doesn't get rid of the demons. You know, they are prophetic acts that we use because that activates, but it doesn't have the power. So people that are putting their faith into an object, into an incense, into a burning sage, you are stepping into witchcraft. So everything comes from the Holy Spirit. Is the Holy Spirit guiding you to do a prophetic act? And I'm gonna be talking about prophetic acts, about a, a wine, about, um, it's in the Bible, salt, about Holy Communion, about oil, right? All of these are prophetic acts that we can use for the spiritual warfare and deliverance, but we are gonna be talking about uh, those things. Um, what else? Another one, oh, and part of the testimony that I w wanted to share about, uh, Another one, uh, apart from my mom's testimony and my testimony also, was that, do you remember that when I was a witch, I was consecrated to a principality and part of my covenant with this demon was a golden coin. It was an object. And even as a Christian, I was carrying this object with me. And that was giving the enemy a legal right that even as a Christian, he was coming to, you know, oppress me. And I used to see him moving the... the the doors of the of the of the of the room of the wardrobes and I used to just be lay, laying down and, and I used to just be like what's this like I'm panicked because now I knew that's darkness now I'm in light why they're coming to chase me what is this and then when my husband had a dream about my husband is so prophetic even since the beginning he's been having dreams how amazing is that um about that this Indian aborigine was coming to ask him for permission for me I realized I, I don't think we have broken the covenant with this with this demon and that's when I realized the golden coin has to be thrown away burn if you can burn any witchcraft stuff that you have if you can burden perfect if no in a black uh, bean bag throw them away don't another person was asking me can I give them back don't 
because you are participating don't give them back if the holy spirit even if someone gave you something and they were saying oh they gave me this i'm gonna give it back to them because i feel bad no you're giving them the demons you're opening the portal for them destroy it destroy it okay destroy it so so that's with the objects that's why we need to and it was just a coin of gold a coin of gold so this is why it doesn't matter what it is this sermon is important you need to ask the holy spirit and if you are sensing something wrong my friend get rid of the get, toys also toys what are your i have a lot of listen i do cleansing with my children's toys every two months every three months because there's so many toys that you don't even know and the times that i have removed a lot of stuff and i'm like where does it come from so that's why it's important okay toys important um if it's not good for you it's not good for anyone else i like them how do you cleanse your toys you throw them away <laughs> if you see that the holy spirit is telling you something about a toy you just don't have it throw it away throw it away and then the last one is clothes clothes and garments and this is what what happened is that with garments is that in in any culture there are costumes traditions values laws all of these things and dresses and garments so some of these items are used in worship in different cultures okay and we need to review carefully and ask the holy spirit what is moving into the kingdom of god what is coming inside your house that is related with with these dresses with these clothes with these garments so this is another thing that's why in my case i don't like to have second hand things it's not because you know oh i'm rich and millionaire i don't wanna no I don't, I don't, I don't like second, second, second hand things. Um, if I can avoid it, I don't, I don't buy it because you, the anointing and everything is passing close. So you need to make sure what are you putting in yourself, what are you bringing into the house. Now let's go to the last part, and then I will give you guys the quick list. If not, I will put it on Teachable, the whole list, so you guys can have a look. What happened? What I was gonna say? Oh, <laughs> the important one. So we have gone through all of that. But what happened? What happened? How do you, like the coin, you just throw it away and make sure, how, how do you destroy items that can be burned like the coin? You just make sure that you throw them away that no one can find it. That's why the bean bag, I rub the things in bean bag, smash them, destroy them. That's another dream that I had, actually. It reminded me. Um. So... This is the question. So you have gone through all the objects. You want to purify your house, first of all, for your children, blah, blah, blah. So how do you do if you are living with someone that doesn't want to get rid of something? What do you do if you are living with people that are opening portals in your life? So this is also part of my testimony, right? I was a Christian when I met my husband. Um, then we married, all of that. And what happened was that he is half Chinese right so his dad was chinese and his dad had a lot of paintings from china he they even had blood tiger blood that i think they used to drink or something i mean i'm not chinese so i don't know if anyone here is chinese so they used to have this um this 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 chinese blood uh, chinese blood dra uh, dragon blood lion blood apparently for them to live and to live longer so the, i remember it used to be like a massive thing like this of blood of tiger's blood right and other things that he used to have he also had someone gave him a muslim blanket or something but by that point right so we were living in his in his uh, friend's house when i met him and i got pregnant now we move into our first flat okay that by that point that flat looked like a paradise but it was a nightmare but it's fine god bless us in that place but at the end we were just this is Egypt. we want to live Egypt. we need to live but when we went there it was a blessing and then i realized that he was bringing all of these things to the house like, can you imagine my face and by that point i was like i was learning about all of these things and i was crazy i was like no you are not christian you need to remove that i don't want those things in my house we had a lot of arguments i wasn't wise I wasn't wise and obviously he wasn't Christian so what I was doing was that I was pushing him farther from God instead of me being wise and ask the Holy Spirit for direction I was pushing him away and I, and I was like I actually made him throw away the the carpet that this Muslim woman gave him and he was offended he was like you don't throw things that other people give you like he's really nice and calm if you see him but he got angry he was like you don't throw things that other people and I was like I don't care it has to go it has to go I don't care and he threw it away but even until today he remembers that 
right? But I, I say sorry. What happened was that when we were moving to the flat, he was carrying the tiger's blood, and I don't know what happened. He tells me that it is smashed on the floor. That even there, the Lord was kind of like protecting us without me knowing. You know, a tiger's blood, like a kind of like for a ritual, and you know, this is another revelation that I had of vampire facials with blood. Guys, can you believe I was doing that? I was, I, I did one. And I was gonna go for the second bumper. Can you believe that this sermon? I was going for the second one. My husband was driving me to the train station. Even my son, my husband said, wait a minute, are you telling me that you're doing, my husband is just amazing. Are you telling me that you're doing a bumper facial with blood? He was like, at bumpers, no demons. Why are you doing that? And then something hit me and I'm like, oh my God, blood ritual. Suddenly I realized, and then my, my husband was telling me, it just doesn't make sense that you're a Christian and you talk about blood and sacrifices and you're just going to do right there and do a bumper. And suddenly something hit me and I was going to the place and then my son prayed for me before I left and he was like, God, give mommy this sermon so she doesn't do any more blood rituals. And I was just right there like trapped, like, wow. And on my way there, I just started to Google it. What's bumper facial? Where where does this yes the PRP? <laughs> where where does this come from? And I realized obviously I come from the occultism. Why I didn't know this before? There is a ritual that is made with blood. That is basically for initiations. What happen? I don't like to speak about these type of things, but when you are in, initiating someone, that person has to kill something, an animal, a person, something, and with the blood they do the ritual and they thingy in their face and everywhere and that's why also they drink the blood of you know um young virgins and babies and all that there are children here so i don't i don't touch that part that's why because of the beauty so now you are using in the prp the blood to become younger and you don't realize it's a ritual even if it's your own blood but i was actually thinking i don't know if this comes from the holy spirit or not i was actually thinking how many people pay for the baby's blood to do the prp because it's young, it has more plasma, it's, 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 you know. And I was just right, this is my own thought process that I'm sharing here. So I was thinking that like, wow, how many people actually, because of the plasma and the blood, they might, might get baby's blood or something to do the PRPs in their, in, their, in, their, in their faces. And it's a facial that you do with blood, with your own blood for you to look young. So just, just now it's like my mind was open. So that day I didn't do it. I, I went home and I repented and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't know, like ignorance, right? I repented for that. I closed that portal. I repented and, and that's it. Like, it's not with blood. They, they take the plasma from the blood. So the plasma is just like a like yellow something skin that they inject in your skin for scars. If you have acne, if you have wrinkles and all, and all of that stuff. But that revelation with blood. So what happened is that my, the, um, that blood that my husband was taking home, the tiger blood, just before entering our house, it fell on the ground and it broke. And this is what the Holy Spirit told me. You cannot force someone to remove objects in their houses. You cannot do that. So this is when discernment comes for all of you that you have partners, that you have people living in your house and you can't remove the objects. You cannot go to someone else's property to remove objects. That's wrong. That's no of your property that you don't have the legal right to do that. Let me start from that, okay? So how do you do it? So you want to remove the things, you want to do that. Well, you have the authority and the power and the legal right through Jesus Christ to mute, bind, blind, and confuse every spirit, every evil force that is coming from that object, okay? Obviously, in the background, you need to pray to God for discernment, wisdom, and revelation so the person can have an encounter and can say, okay, no, or maybe the person can say, it's fine, take it, like, remove it, it's fine, okay? You need to pray in the background for God to open their eyes, Father, but also you pray that that object is bind, muted, blind, and confused in Jesus' name, and you remove the power and everything that is trying to manifest through that object. You can do that, you put your hands, Father, in Jesus' name, I blind, mute, confuse, 
Father, everything that's trying to come through this object, I remove the power of the enemy right now that's coming through this object. I remove their power right now. And I just declare that they are muted because they speak, blinded so they can see and confuse in Jesus' name. That's how you do it. You get anointed oil and you anoint your house. We are going to do, during the Holy Spirit Friday night, anointing your houses. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you some instructions next week or what do you need to do for Holy Spirit Friday night? Because I wanna, I think is this weekend. I think it is this month. I, I want us to go all around your houses. I'm gonna important that the, you don't have headphones because remember, preachings, worship. Don't keep it for you. Release that and release that in your house. So when we do that during the Holy Spirit Friday night, um, we are gonna go around your house. And as you take me all around your house, I will be praying for your house. Um, really anointing you anoint your house in the in a way that I'm going to tell you but also important that first of all you start removing these objects see we can't anoint the demons and that's why when I see people are anointing demons you don't anoint them first of all you cast them out of that place before you anoint the place amen so first we are going to that's why from now on with a list start asking the Holy Spirit what is in your house knowingly or unknowingly clothes because I was talking about clothes clothes that that you have from excess or from someone that died you are doing a soul tie there in the spirit and allowing the enemy maybe you are dreaming with someone that has died years ago you keep dreaming with a person you keep dreaming maybe you have a cloth, something from that person that is doing a soul tie and that's acting as an open portal for the enemy. So you need to, you know, ask for discernment for the Holy Spirit. What is in my house? Is it something that I need to remove? What is in my house? And after that, you remove that from your house, you repent for that. And when we are we are gonna come, I'm gonna show you how to do anointed oil, how to pray for it, and then you guide me through your house and we are just gonna release the power of God, anointed your house, anoint your children, pillows, uh, shoes whatever the Holy Spirit shows us, okay? So that's how you do it with objects. Don't force anyone. You have the authority and the power. You do it, okay? You can do it. You have the authority. Mute, blind, and confused so they don't see where they are going, so they don't see. They are just there, confused and binded, muted, okay? Blinded, so they are just there, and you just remove their power, and then... Um, yeah, ask the Holy Spirit for discernment for the person that needs to remove those objects. Remember that everything you fight it in the spirit. It doesn't matter who you are living with. It doesn't matter what they believe is. You need to start taking territory. Start complaining and start moaning. That's what I did. And I learned the wrong way. I, I learned this doing the opposite of what I'm doing now. Okay? I used to moan, complain, throw things that weren't even mine, arguing with my husband, sitting with him with the Bible. Ah! Now the Holy Spirit told me, you are not being wise. You are not edifying your house. And that's what I asked him, okay, give me a strategies. And he started to give me strategies towards the atmosphere in my house, binding and muting and blinding these demons, and blah, blah, blah. And look at my husband now, having encounters with the Holy Spirit. So that's an amazing testimony there, okay? Um, I think that's it. Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have time to give you guys the, the whole list right but i'm going to upload the video put the whole list on teachable on the wednesday section that is already open i'm going to put you also today the quizzes for today so you guys can practice and for tomorrow friday um some activations that you can do if someone has the link for the private community for band uh, for the advanced program if you can someone can please drop it and you guys can join the private community I think we are 65 people right now oh, the same as here <laughs> and you can guys join that and I'm gonna be putting some activations there too for tomorrow that you can practice maybe with someone in there or as individuals I'm going to see okay and then from next week we will be talking about taking territory in the land how to cleanse your land how to cleanse your city but first let, let, let's get things in order make sure that through this week start partnering with the holy spirit with your children ask them ask the holy spirit to show you if there's something that we need to remove from the house partner with your family and start uh, removing every time that, that something comes to your mind make sure that you listen to that voice put it in a bag and throw it away take it out of your house amen clear Okay, so um, when the anointing, the anointing is not going to be done yet, it's going to be done in two weeks time, God's willing. 
and looking for directions for the Holy Spirit. When a lot of objects in another person's house, do you have to go to each object in house or can you pray? You can pray as a whole. You go around the house, around the house. That's what we do, an anointing, right? You can go all around the house, every object. You, you, I mean, if your house is a mansion. <laughs> I remember one day I was um, helping someone were cleansing the house and I, I didn't know they had actually a mansion. It took us over an hour to go around the house with the salt and another hour with the oil. I'm like, I was like, what? And, and they were like, oh, I have some lands too. And I'm like, okay, you you know what you have to do. I will send you the prayers, go to your land and you go to your, all your properties and you do it because that was, that was actually long, no? Wasn't expecting that. Um, so yeah, so that's all. Let me just pray. Father, I just wanna give you thanks, Father, for this session and thank you, Father, because you are opening our eyes. You are opening the eyes of our understanding, Father, so we can just come into agreement with your Holy spirit father so we can cleanse not only our lives but our houses our land and i just want to give you thanks father for all of that and i ask you holy spirit that throughout this week and the next couple of weeks or months that you keep showing us what things we have in our house that we need to remove what things even in our lives that we need to come into agreement with you to remove them all of those things all of those behaviors all of those thoughts from our lives father so we can be cleansed so we can father become a little bit closer to uh, be like you jesus so i just want to give you thanks father i just bless them i cover them with the blood of jesus i declare a wall of fire around each one of them and i just declare that the enemy is not going to be able to touch them father and i just declare that they are and we are invisible father against the attacks of the enemy father that we are father covered by the blood of jesus that everything that we have and father i just bind every spirit of counter attack and revenge father infirmity premature death and um, disagreements arguments Father, I just bind them and command them to live right now in Jesus' name. I just release in their houses and in their lives, Father, an atmosphere of freedom, an atmosphere, Father, of worship, of intimacy. Father, I just release dreams, ambitions. I just declare, Father, that there is a stair right now from heaven, Father, to earth. That there is a stair, Father, right now from heaven to their houses right now. And the angels are coming down and going up, coming down and going up. I just declare that every person that's waiting here for an answer every spirit father in the second heaven that's trying to stop those answers father i just declare father that as we worship as we pray as we fast father they are going to be removed that prince of persia is going to be father bind and i just declare that the answer is coming in jesus mighty name i just release your freedom father tonight in jesus name amen